We are talking uh, with our series we've been doing called Be, and then there's a fill in the blank. We had Be Courageous. Who like to be courageous? Or Be Not Afraid. Then we talked about Be Joyful, how we can be full of God's joy. Who likes joy? Joy is a great thing for us to have. Today, we're going a little bit different path, and this is incredibly important for us to be, and it's called to be still. Be still. We're going to do an experiment. I'm going to get my phone out really quickly. And I'm going to check and see how long we can be quiet in this room with no noise whatsoever. If you go at least 30 seconds, in two weeks, we're going to give you a free taco. (laughs) Who's on for that challenge? Okay, I want to take a second. Here we go. Ready, set, go. We're not going to count babies. They can be loud. You guys made it to get a free taco in two weeks. I'll be honest, I almost stopped the whole thing at 20 seconds because it felt kind of uncomfortable. I was like, man, somebody needs to say something. Probably me since I'm the guy with the microphone. And Silence in our culture can be uncomfortable. And we live in a world that doesn't have much silence. We live in a world full of noise and full of craziness, and full of busyness, and, and we live in a world where we don't have a lot of silence. I have five kids in my house. There's not much silence ever in my house. Even at night, they snore and make noise, and, and someone always gets up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. They do, and they don't know how to shut a door quietly, um, but there's always noise in our life, and the truth is, is that when we live in a, in a world so full of noise, it distracts us or keep, uh, keeps us from, from one of the most important things that we can have as, our, as a part of our life, and that is hearing the voice of God. And in order for us to hear the voice of God the way we're supposed to hear the voice of God, we need to do this incredible thing that we don't learn in school, and it's called being still. I want to read a verse for you. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, it says this, Be still and know that I am God. What what does he say? If you will just quiet down, if you will be quiet, if you will be still. Now everybody listening, not just being still with our body, but being still with our heart, with our emotions, being still with our mind. If we get at that place of being still, what does it say will happen? It says when we get at this place of being still, be still, and you will know that I am God. In the moment of stillness, in a moment of learning to quiet everything around us, God will show himself to be strong. As a matter of fact, he goes on and says, I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Because of our stillness, because of our taking the time to quiet ourselves and listen to the amazing voice of God, what does God say he'll do? If you will be still and hear my voice, I will be honored among the nations. I will be honored. Why? Because he will speak things to us that will change the direction of our land, of our nation, of our country, of our world, if we will just take the time to be still. I think one of the reasons why many times there are so many bad things on our planet today is because people who know God haven't taken the time to listen to God, to get God's plan. We haven't taken the time to be still. And today we're going to look at that. Now, I'll be teaching a little bit more today, and, but how many of you in this room want to hear the voice of God? You want to be able to not just to hear it one time, and God doesn't just want to speak to us once. God wants a continuing relationship and conversation with us. He doesn't want speaking to him to be a one-time, woo, I heard God, now I don't hear him again for 50. No, it should be an ongoing conversation that God has with us. That is what he wants. Today we're going to look at how can we hear what God is saying to us. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. How do we hear what God is saying to us? First thing, if we want to hear what God's saying to us, we need to put ourselves in a position to hear. If we want to hear what God's saying to us, we have to put ourselves in a position to hear. 
Now, we're going to look at a story from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. It's a story of Samuel as a young man. I I remember when I first read this story, after I'd given my life to Christ, I gave my life to Jesus, and I was just reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible. I read this story, and and the point of this story just hit me strong, the importance of hearing the voice of God. Uh, Let's start in verse 1. We're going to read quite a few verses from 1 Samuel chapter 3. We'll start in verse 1, and it shows us how we put ourselves in a position to hear God's voice. 1 Samuel verse 1, it says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel, now who is Samuel? Samuel was this young man. His mom and his dad couldn't have children, so his mom, Hannah, she would go to the Lord, and she would cry out to the Lord, God, give me a child. God, give me a child. And she made this statement. She said, Lord, if you give me a child, I will dedicate him to your work, and he will be your servant. And so the Lord gave them a child, and his name was Samuel. And so they took Samuel to the temple. Once he was old enough to go there, they took him to the temple to this priest called Levi. Now, Levi was the head priest. He was over all of the temple. And then his sons were under him. The problem was, Levi at this time was not really serving God. He was going a different direction. He had gotten complacent in his relationship with God. He wasn't talking, huh? Eli. I say Eli, or did I say? Oh, Eli. Eli, he had grown, he'd grown his relationship with God. It was separate, and he wasn't listening. And his sons, his sons were actually in sin, doing the wrong things. And you look here and see it says, it says, and meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. And now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. Look at this. Messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. Do you know why the messages from the Lord were very rare? Because Eli and his sons weren't listening for the messages. It wasn't like God wasn't talking. It was just that they weren't listening. You ever feel like God's silent? The truth is, God's usually not silent. God's just waiting for us to shut up long enough that we would listen and hear his voice. Well, Lord, I haven't heard from you in a long time. We'll talk about this later. It wasn't the fact that God, God wanted to talk. God wanted to share things. God, but, but Eli and his sons weren't, they weren't doing the right thing. It says this, and it says, one night, Eli, who was now almost blind by now, had gone to bed, and the camp of the lamp of God had not gone out yet. Look at this. Look at this. This is important. And Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Where was the ark of God? That was where the presence of God was. Where was he sleeping? He was sleeping near the presence of God. Listen, Eli and his sons weren't sleeping there, but Samuel was sleeping near the presence of God, near the Ark of the Covenant. And I want to say this, when we position ourselves near the presence of God, that's when God speaks to us. Eli and his sons were living in sin. They were doing the wrong thing, going the wrong direction. But what was Samuel doing? Samuel was sleeping near the ark of God. Who wants to hear the voice of God? We have to sleep near the ark of God. Now, we don't have an ark of God now. Where does God live? God lives within us. He lives within us. But we let too many things keep us from hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. It says, and suddenly the Lord cried out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? And he got up and he ran to Eli and he said, here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied, so he go back to bed. And so he went back to bed, and the Lord called out again, Samuel. And again, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, did you call me? And he said, I didn't call you, son. Go back to bed. Now here's the deal. Samuel was hearing the voice of God because he was positioned in the presence of God. You know, that's where God wants us to be. God wants to speak to us, but he will speak to us when we're positioned in his presence. When we spend time worshiping the Lord, who, will, who likes to worship? When we spend time worshiping the Lord, he will speak to us. Why? Because we're positioned in his presence. When we spend time praying and just talking to him, he will speak to us when we make the decision to be positioned in his presence. When we just make a choice to turn off all the craziness and busyness around us, he will speak to us when we enter into his presence and we lay our head near the Ark of the Covenant in his presence. That's where he wants to be. I'll give you an example of this. Something crazy happened this morning. It was awesome. 
I was up here and I was worshiping the Lord. And, and I was up here and I'm just like worshiping, worshiping, worshiping the Lord. I came in. I don't know if you were like me. Anybody else like this? You come in and when the time for worship comes, you'll have a million thoughts hit your head. You know, like, what are you going to eat for dinner tonight? What are your kids doing right now? Why, are, why is that dude wearing those shoes? You know, all these, all these questions will come in your brain. And, and I'm on the front. I'm thinking, okay, I got to, Lord, I got to preach this message. I got to do this. And, and last week I was praying a lot because I like to know and I plan sermon series out in advance. So we have like the B series. It goes for a couple of more weeks after tonight. And, and then after today, then uh, after that, we're doing a series I'm excited about called Sweeter Together. It's about relationships. And every week, we're going to be giving away candy. Like one week is called Red Hot Romance. Woo! And we'll be giving out Red Hots. That's going to be an awesome week, by the way. Red Hot Romance. And we have one called Sour Patch Kids and talking about raising kids. And every time you come in, you're going to be getting candy. Who likes free candy? A box of free candy or at least one piece of candy. Uh, maybe one Red Hot for everybody. Or I think we could go for a box. But, but, but we're going to be doing that series. But after that, I don't know what we're doing. And I've been praying, Lord, I want to know, Lord, I want to know, Lord, I want to know. And so I'm standing in the front row, and I come in, and, I, and I'm just worshiping the Lord. I just start worshiping the Lord. And I'm like, okay, I have all these thoughts. No, these thoughts have to go. I just want to be in your presence. And I just, I just don't think about anything else. And I'm like, God, you are so good. You're amazing. You're really awesome. And the Lord comes, and he goes, here's your next series that I want you to do after this one. I'm like, what? I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to wait. And so the Lord starts speaking to me. Here's the next series I want you to do. And I, and I, I like, oh, I don't have a pen or a piece of paper. I don't have, but I have my phone. And so I got my phone and I, and I put it on like the dimmest resolution you can. Because here's what I do now. I don't usually carry a pen and a piece of paper, but everywhere I go, I usually have this. And so I open up and I just start taking notes. I'm like, I hope nobody thinks I'm, I'm rude because uh, I'm just writing down what the Lord said to me. And so I wrote down the name of the sermon series. And he's like, and with that series, here's some verses. And I'm like, oh man, you're talking to me some more. I just was worshiping. I wasn't asking him to say anything. He just starts talking. And he says, you know, you like to shoot videos that are kind of funny and goofy. I'm like, yeah, I do, Lord. And he goes, here's a couple of ideas ideas. I'm like, whoa, those are the best ones I've ever had. I'm not going to tell anybody that was you. I just told everybody it was him. And so I'm sitting there and I'm typing all these things up. Why? Because, because when, we, when we position ourselves in his presence, do you know he'll speak to you when you're not even looking for it, but when you're just positioned in his presence? That's where we need to be. And if we want to hear the voice of God, I think most of us in this room wanted to, we have to position ourselves near his presence, whether it's in worship, whether it's in prayer. I would say in church is a great place because people around you are worshiping too and God's presence fills this place and we position ourselves. Here's another thought. How do we hear what God is saying? We position ourselves to hear. Next thing is we confirm that it is God that is speaking. We confirm that it is God speaking. We'll make sure this is God to saying this. You ever heard something and it wasn't God, it was a burrito <laughs> that you had the night before. You're like, oh, I think that's the Lord. No, that was just gas. That was not the Lord. <laughs> and we have to make sure that what we hear is the Lord. It's so important to make sure what we hear is the Lord. And let's go ahead in verse 7. It says, and Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never heard a message from the Lord before. Samuel didn't know the Lord's voice. He was just a noob. He was just a noob in following God. He just was like, God, I'm following you, and, and I don't know what I'm doing. And God spoke, and he's like, I don't know. This is you. He hadn't heard the voice of God. Do you know, if you've never heard the voice of God before, it is so important just to hang out in the presence so you do hear it. I remember... When I gave my heart to Christ, I used to fall on my knees and pray because I just thought that was cool. And so I'd fall on my knees. And I remember one time, every night before I'd go to bed, I'd fall on my knees by my bed. And I would just start crying out to God. And I would cry out to God and I'd cry out to God. And then one time, because I didn't know you were supposed to shut up in prayer. I just thought you were supposed to talk. And so one time, I like took a deep breath because I was talking so much to the Lord. And when I took a deep breath, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I didn't hear him with my ears, but I heard him. It was like this, it was like, it was like this, this, this amazing experience of him speaking to my heart. And I jumped up. I was like, what? I was like, what was that? And I was like, I think that was God. And I remember I got back on my knees again. When I got on my knees again, 
I remember he spoke the same thing to me again. And I jumped up and I was like, that is, and I went and I had a pen and a piece of paper. You couldn't write on your phone back then. You could write on it, but you would have to just write on the phone. It was one of those ones with a cord. Anybody know what those are anymore? They even have those. And I wrote, I wrote on a pencil and piece of paper and I wrote down everything the Lord spoke to me. See, God wants to speak to us, but he wants to know that when he speaks to us, that we verify that it's him. How many people say, I heard the Lord, and I'm doing this, and it wasn't the Lord. <laughs> it was their own flesh. Look at this. It says, it says, so the Lord called a third time, verse 8. So the Lord called a third time once more to Samuel, and Samuel got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, here I am. Did you call me? Waking Eli up again. It says, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. As I was studying that this week, something hit me that hadn't hit me before. Okay, so Samuel's hearing the voice of the Lord because he's sleeping right near, because he's sleeping right near the presence of God. He goes into Eli, who at one time was following God with his whole heart and was hearing the voice of God. And, and Eli realizes that's God speaking to him. Do you know what Eli should have done? Eli should have said, hey, Samuel, I'm going to get a pillow and a blanket, and I'm going to go lay beside you. Because it's been a while since I've heard God's voice. And if he's speaking, I want to be where he's at. And I want to hear his voice. But Eli didn't do that, did he? But what does Samuel do? Samuel went to the guy who had heard the Lord's voice before, and he got confirmation that it was the Lord. See, whenever God speaks to us, we need to confirm that it's him. How do you do that? I have some check the boxes for you. How do you confirm that this is God speaking? Here's some questions you need to ask when you feel like the Lord is speaking to you, or when you feel like the Lord is asking you to do something or challenging you to go somewhere. The first question you need to ask is, does it get us and others closer to Jesus? Does what God is asking me to do, does what God is speaking to me right now, does it get me and does it get others closer to Jesus? That's a key thing to ask. Here's another one. Does it go along with God's word? Does what God is speaking to me, does what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, we want to hear the voice of God. Here's what I would say. God will not speak something that goes against what he says in his book. Anybody out there, you guys awake. He won't speak something that goes against what he says in his word. I remember one time I had a young lady come up to me when we were youth pastor, and she goes, Pastor Tom, I know I'm supposed to marry this guy. I know I'm supposed to marry this guy. I just love him. And I'm like, does he love Jesus? And she goes, no, he doesn't love Jesus. doesn't want anything to do with God. And I said, do you love Jesus? She said, yes, I love Jesus. And I said, why do you think you're supposed to marry him? I think God told me to marry him. And I looked at her and I said, God's not telling you to marry him, girl. She's like, how do you know that? Because he says in his word not to. That's right. He says not to be unequally yoked with an un... He says don't marry. He says don't do it. She goes, well, I feel like it's God. And I'm like, no, your flesh wants it. Right. See, sometimes our flesh will want something so bad. We're like, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. No, it's our flesh. Right. If we want to do something that hurts a bunch of other people, that's our flesh and not the Lord. And we can look at his word, and you're like, how do I know it? You have to read his word to know what he's speaking. Number one, who wants to, who wants to see God speak to you? Who wants God to speak to you? Who wants God to speak? Then get one of these and open it up. <laughs> Let's go ahead and keep going. Is it something Jesus would do? Is what God's speaking to you something that you could see Jesus doing? Who remembers those old bracelets they used to have, WWJD? <laughs> We might bring those back. Those are great. That's a great, that's a great thing for us to know. Would Jesus do what, what God is asking me to do? Is that something I've seen in the life of Jesus? Here's one that's not in your notes. I would ask you to write it down. Is it confirmed by the Holy Spirit within you? Is what is being spoken, what you're hearing, what you're feeling? And sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to you through a feeling. Ah, oh, I just kind of feel like I should do this. And but but it does it does it does it click? Does it go with with what your spirit? Is saying, I remember, I remember early on in walking with Christ, I had, I had somebody come to me and they're like, oh, I just have a check in my spirit. I have a check in my spirit. And I'm like, what are you talking about, a check in your spirit? Because all I knew were like checks you wrote. And you're like, yeah, I was going to do this. And I just had a check. Who's ever heard that phrase, a check in my spirit? Anybody ever heard? They would always say that in the church I went to. I have a check in my spirit. And I'm like, I have no clue what that means. 
And then I finally asked somebody, what are you talking about a check in your spirit? And they're like, something just doesn't feel right about what's going on or what I heard or what I see. See, that's what the Holy Spirit, he lives inside of you to, to give you green lights or red lights. He'll say, go and do this, or he'll have a red light and say, stop, 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 stop. And there are many times the Holy Spirit leads me as much by red lights as he does by green lights. I'll give you, for instance, in Scripture, this in the book of Acts, uh, uh, Paul was getting ready to go to a city, and as he's getting ready to go, he's praying, and it says the Holy Spirit forbade them. He said, no, you're not going to that city. Don't go there. Don't know why the Holy Spirit said not to go there, but having the Holy Spirit knows more than we do. And so they did not go to that city. Holy Spirit will say no to start. I remember one time I was going to buy a car. I was going to buy a car, and it just didn't feel right. It just, I went and I drove it around. I was like, woo, I like this car. But as I'm driving, it just didn't. The car felt fine, but something in here didn't feel right. And I went ahead and bought the car, drove through a red light. That car broke down every time I turned around. I lost money like crazy. See, God will lead us by his spirit inside of us. Anybody okay? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself. Who remembers the old, old, old V8 commercials? Where someone would, they would walk crooked. They would walk crooked. Like they come out of the store and they'd walk crooked. And they'd walk crooked and they're like, what is wrong with you? And it's like, I haven't had a V8 yet today. And they take a V8 and they'd get all straight. And that's how, that's how I can describe the feeling if you're out of God's will. If God's saying, don't do that. Oh, it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Listen to that. Listen to that when the Holy Spirit talks to you. So what do we do? We, we put ourselves in position to hear. We confirm that it's God that's speaking. Here's another one. If we want to hear the voice of God, avoid constant distractions. Avoid constant distractions. We live in a world full of crazy distractions all the time. Where, where you'll be in the middle of praying and your phone will start dinging. Who's ever had that happen? Like ding, ding, ding. You're like, oh, I can't even pray. I can't even read the Bible because my phone's going crazy. Avoid constant distractions. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. It says, And the Lord came and called, as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. He wasn't distracted. He goes, I'm here and I'm listening. It says, Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do some shocking things in Israel. I love another version that says this. It says, I'm about to do something. I'm about to do something that's going to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. How many of you like it when God does something like that? And, and God just sitting there, man, if you would just shut up, I would tell you some cool stuff I'm getting ready to do. I would tell you some stuff that's going to rock the world. I was going to tell you some stuff that's going to help you out if you just shut up. If you just listen. If you would just be still. It says, and then the Lord said, I'm about to do some shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from the beginning to the end. I have warned him with that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Samuel stayed in the bed until morning. Then he got up and he opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual and he was afraid to tell Eli what God had told him. I mean, you know, hey, Eli, what's going on? God's getting ready to kill you <laughs> and your sons. You should have got up and laid by me near the ark. <laughs> now you're dying. <laughs> and he was scared because he respected Eli. He did. Eli was like a mentor to him in, in many ways. And what did Eli do? Eli and his sons, Eli and his sons quit hearing the voice of God because of distractions in their life. And I'll be this, their primary distractions were sin. Man, that goes over so well. <laughs> When you say sin in the modern day church, you're like, oh, I didn't want to hear this. What is sin? Sin is simply this. Sin is, the Bible says sin is missing the mark. God says, I want you to do this, and I do this. I, I just sin because I miss the mark. Why does God want us to hit the mark? Because the mark, the mark is a place of joy and peace and goodness. God doesn't want us to sin because he's all about the rules. God wants us not to sin because he's all about us. And so Eli and his sons were all doing the wrong thing. Actually, his sons were, and Eli didn't have enough courage he should have heard my sermon, be courageous. He didn't have enough courage, courage to, to discipline them, make them do the right stuff. When you look at this and you see, what are some reasons we're missing what God is saying? What are some of the distractions in our life? Here are a few of them. We don't hear the voice of God because our lives are too busy. Our lives are too busy. You know, many times we lead our life following the urgent instead of the important. We do. This is urgent. This is urgent. This is urgent. And we do things that are urgent, and we miss what is the most important thing. I would even say this. Most of us don't even do the urgent things. We do the stupid things. 
oh, you know what, I, can't, I don't have time to pray or to read my Bible, but I can be on Facebook for five hours a day. Or I can watch my favorite television show, right? I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm, here's what I'm, okay, everybody look at, I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm saying if Jesus isn't the one we revolve around, then those things are bad. But get that. He wants to be the one that our life revolves around. And then those, make, make a priority. Sometimes our lives are too busy. If your lives are too busy to, to hear his voice, to serve him, you need to get rid of some stuff in your life. Get rid of the urgent so you can, you can pay attention to the important. Here's another one. We're looking for the spectacular and not the still small voice. See, sometimes we're like, oh, God, I, I've never heard the voice of God because we're looking for something that's spectacular. Where, God, write me a message in the clouds that I can just read or, or you know, have something spectacular happen. And everybody listening, I want to hear the audible voice of God. And the truth is, God very rarely speaks in the spectacular and he speaks in the still small voice over and over again. You'll see it. It's the story of Elijah. And Elijah had just went through this amazing thing where these prophets were coming against him. And, and God did a miracle and all the prophets were slain. And, and Elijah was standing up victorious. And he walked down and, and he got a threat from the king's wife. says, you're going to die. And he went into hiding. He actually went into hiding and he, and he went and he cried. He was like, oh, I just want to die, Lord. I don't even want to live anymore. He had just had an incredible victory. And the devil comes and attacks him. And he starts crying. And the Lord says, no, I still want to use you. He said, go up on the mountain mountain, go up on the mountain and, and wait for my voice, wait for me to talk to you. And he went up on the mountain, it says when he went on the mountain, he was waiting, it said all of a sudden there came a strong wind, a strong wind so strong that it broke rocks. And it says the Lord was not in the wind. And then shortly after the wind came an earthquake, and you would have thought, oh, the Lord's in the earthquake, and it says the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then after the earthquake came the fire, and you'd be like, oh, that's the Lord, and the Lord was not in the fire, then after the fire came the still small voice. And it says the Lord was in the still small voice. See, many times we look for the spectacular when there's nothing more spectacular than having a wonderful God that would, that would lean down and just whisper in your ear something amazing. That he would see you as so, that he would see you as so valuable that he would just say, hey, I just want to chat with you. I just want to talk to you a little while. See, we look for the spectacular when the still small voice is the way God normally communicates. Here's another one. We don't know the voice of God, or we've forgotten what his voice sounds like. The reason why we don't, we're missing what God is saying is either because we don't know his voice, so he talked about as a, as a new believer, read his word, pray, be quiet, listen, or we've forgotten what his voice sounds like. I remember early in mine and Kim's relationship, we hadn't been going out or dating very long, and I'm working at Mazio's Pizza. I would go to college, and I'd go right after school, I'd go work at Mazio's, and, and every once in a while at Mazio's, I was usually a cook, but I'd have to answer the phone. I still remember how to answer the phone. He would say, hi, this is Tom. Thank you for calling Mazio's. How can I help you? And that's how I answer it every time. She, well, one time I got a phone call, and it was near when I had to get all my stuff done so the next shift could come on, and I'm really busy, and I answer the phone, and the, the lady's like, oh, I think I want to order a pizza, and I'm like, that's awesome. Awesome. You just called a pizza place. I thought that in my brain. Hey, you want to order a pizza? What would you like, ma'am? Well, I don't know what I would like. Let me think about it. Tell me what you have. And she just kept asking random weird questions about everything. And the, the call went on and on. And I finally said, ma'am, when you know what you want, why don't you call us back and I'd be glad to take your order. And I hung up on her. Not incredible customer service. Well, like a couple of minutes later, the phone rang again. I went and grabbed it. I was like, oh, it's probably that lady again. I ran and grabbed it. I was like, hi, thank you for calling Mazio. My name is Tom. How may I help you? And then I heard this voice. She was like, hi, Tom. This is Kim. And I'm like, oh, Kim. Kim, how are you? It's good talking to you again. And she was like, yeah, I just called you a minute ago, and you hung up on me. <laughs> now, we hadn't been going out long enough that I would recognize her voice. Now if she calls, I know it's her. Even if it's a, why? Because I've heard her through the years talk a little bit. And, and she talks. And the more we talk, the more I get used to hearing her voice. That way when I hear her voice, I immediately know it's her. See, that's the way God wants to be in our life. Here's the last reason we're missing what God is saying. We miss what God is saying because we didn't do the last thing that he said. <laughs> You know, when God tells you to do something, he wants us to do it. <laughs> and if we don't do the last thing he said, he's not going to tell us another thing until we do the last thing he said. Why would he give us more instructions if we didn't do his last instructions? 
And God says, do what I said, then I'll tell you more. Do what I said, then I'll tell you more. I remember a long time ago, we were youth pastors in Missouri. We were, man, our youth group was going great. It was our first job as youth pastors, and youth group was growing. And a few years into it, we just knew we were supposed to come back to Tulsa. This is both of our homes. We love Tulsa. And we would pray, God, send us back. Let us go back. And so anytime there was a job opening in Tulsa, we would check on it because we wanted to go and we wanted to move back here. Felt like we were supposed to. And so I remember one time this job came open at a church that we loved, and we came down and interviewed for the job. Now, here's the deal. This was a large, large, large church. The church that we were interviewing for was about five times larger, if not more than that, than the church we were at. But the church we were at, we had built their youth group, and it was it was about three times bigger than this large church's youth group in this smaller church. And I remember going to interview, and I thought, driving down there, I thought, well, they can't, they're going to hire us. There's no way they're not going to hire us because we've built a great youth group and, and their youth group's not very good and they'll hire us. And we went down for the interview and when we interviewed. The interview went very well. We liked everybody we interviewed with. And they said at the end, they said, we'll call you when we make a decision. They never called. Didn't get a phone call. Found out later they had hired someone else who didn't have very much experience and, and they hired them. And I remember as soon as they hired them and I heard they hired somebody else, I was mad. I'm like, I'm never going there. I'm not going to go there. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. I went back to Kim and I said, we're staying here in Missouri. We're staying in Missouri. We're going to go find a house. We're buying a house. We'd rented a house for, for years and years. I was like, we're buying a house. We went, on, we went on, we bought a house. So we bought a house. We're like, we are going to stay here. About six months after we buy a house, after about six months after we buy a house, that same church calls us again. They called on the phone and they said, hey, we want, we want to hire you. We want to offer you a position this time, not as the junior high youth pastor, but we want you to be over all the youth ministry, over every bit of it. You, we want you to be over all of it. Would you be interested in that job? And I said, no, I don't want your job. I'm not going to take your job. And I hung up the phone and I didn't want to talk to him. I'm like, I'm not taking the job. I went, I went and I was praying later that day. I was praying, God, I ask you to move. I want you to move. I want you to move in our youth group here. And the Lord started speaking to me. He goes, he said, I want you to take that job. I said, I don't want to take that job. I don't want to take that job. They, they, they didn't want to hire me before. Now they want to hire me now. I don't want that job. We just bought a house. We're going to live here. We are planted here. I'm not going to take that job. And the Lord said, I want you to take that job. And I'm like, I'm leaving this, this, this thing we're talking about. I'm going to come over here, and Lord, I want you to do this. I asked for this. I asked for this. I asked for this. And the Lord wouldn't speak to me about that. And I'm like, Lord, let's talk about this. And he goes, no, we're not talking about this. We're talking about that. You need to take that job. I'm not talking about that, Lord. I already told you I'm not taking that job. And he goes, well, I'm not talking about that to you. I'm not going to talk to you if you're not going to talk to me about what I told you to do. And I just stood there stubbornly. I'm like, well, I'll just stay here for a long time. Well, after a while, I was like, I am really hosed if I don't have God on my side. And I said, okay, Lord, we'll come back and we'll talk about this. And I walked over here. And you know why I didn't want to talk about it? I didn't want to talk about it because of pride, sin. That's a sin. Because I don't want to go back and say, I took the job. Now. I, I, I was in pride exactly the reason. I came back over and I was like, okay, Lord, you want me to take the job? And he's like, yes, take that job. I'm like, I don't want to take that job. I don't like him right now. And he's like, I don't care if you don't like him. I want you to take the job. And I'm like, okay, I'll take the job. And he goes, and this is what he said to me. It's funny how God will be specific and give you specific details and plans. And he said, I, w I want to tell you what, what you need to do when you go and talk to them. And I said, okay. And he said, when you talk to them, and when the Lord starts talking, I ran and grabbed a pen and a piece of paper. I had a notebook. And I started writing. He goes, when, the, when you go talk to them, tell them the things you want different because there's a reason why the youth group hasn't grown. Boom, here are the reasons why. And he said, ask, he said, ask for this. He said, you need to ask for a different supervisor than the one they have right now. And I'm like, that's not going to go over well. And he goes, ask for it. And I said, okay. And then he says, you need to ask for a better facility. They need to improve the facility. And I'm like, they're not going to want to do that. He goes, ask for it. I had nothing to lose because I didn't want the job anyway. And so the Lord gave me about five or six things that I wrote down on a sheet of paper. I threw a couple of more in that he didn't tell me. Because I didn't want the job. I thought, well, well uh, uh, maybe this will make them not hire me. I said, I want more money than I make right now. And I asked for a significant amount more. The Lord didn't tell me to ask for that one. I told me to ask for that one. And I threw a couple more in there. And I remember they were all written down on paper. And I went and I typed them up. And, and whenever we went to that meeting, I brought them in. And they said, well, we'd like to hire you. And I'm like, well, here are what, here's what I want. Here's what I feel like I need to have happen before I take this job. And I went down, I had this piece of paper, and I showed him everything on the paper. And the pastor looked at me and goes, we'll do all those things. And I'm like, I should have added more. <laughs> oh, oh, new car. Oh. And I remember, but during that time when, and here was the time, during that time when God said do this, 
I didn't hear his voice. And that leads us to our last point, which is this. If we want to hear the voice of God, we need to do what God says. Here's the truth. Once I came to the point where I said, God, I'll do what you say, he gave me a list of things to ask for that every one of them got done, and it made a huge impact on about 1,500 kids in this city. If I came in with my list, it wouldn't have been the same list he gave me. He had a better list. When we listen to his voice and we do what he says, that's when he speaks to us. Here's the last part. Look at this, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Do what he says. Okay, everybody look at me. Sometimes what he tells you to do, you will feel like you can't do. You will feel inadequate because the truth is you are inadequate. <laughs> you are not big enough, strong enough, great enough to do what God's asking you to do because if that was the case, if that was the case, you wouldn't need him. God will only ask you to do things that you cannot do that only he can do through you. So if what he's asking, you're like, oh, I can get that done, Lord. That wasn't the Lord. You can write that down your list. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, it says, but Eli called out to him and said, Samuel, my son, here I am, Samuel replied. How many of you know Samuel's trying to avoid that conversation? <laughs> here I am, Samuel replied. He said, what did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything. And may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. I'm just thinking in Samuel's head, he's like, God ain't going to kill me. <laughs> 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 it ain't going to be me, brother. It's going to be you. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> it says, so Samuel told Eli everything, and he didn't hold anything back. And then Eli said, if it's the Lord's will, Eli replied, let him do what he thinks is best. Isn't it crazy? That never would have had to, that never would have had to happen. That never would have had to happen with Eli. Never would have had to happen with Eli if Eli would have been in God's presence. And, when, and God said, hey, your kids are getting out of line do you know there are times the Holy Spirit will tell you what your kids are doing? Amen. My kids don't like it. They don't like it at all. There have been times they walked in before and they said something and I was like, hey, you were out doing this, this, and this, weren't you? They're like, they're, they, their face just got really good. They're like, how did, how, did, how did you know that, Dad? How did you know that, Mom? How did you, how'd you know what we were up to? Holy Spirit told me. They're like, I can't do nothing <laughs> without the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome that he lives inside of us and he'll say things to us and show us things? Eli could have had this whole thing saved if he just would have gotten the presence of the Lord and the Lord said to correct this if he just would have done it. Everybody listening, your destiny, your future, your joy, your peace is all held within the voice of God. The problems you're facing right now, God can, God can give you a solution to with one whisper. Things you thought could never be fixed. One whisper from the Holy Spirit could change everything. But if we're not in position or submitted to hear that whisper, we face a messed up situation. But God wants to fix it through one whisper. Let's pray right now all across the room. How many of you in this room want to hear the voice of God? Honestly, you do. Raise your hand. Okay. And you say, God, I'm willing to surrender, to submit. <laughs> That's not the easiest one. Surrender, submit, do whatever. Because I want to hear your voice. I'm willing to, to set things off my schedule to be still. And I ask you to move in my life. All of you want to hear the voice of God. Lift up your hands right now. I want to pray for you. Lord, we want to hear your voice every day. God, we want a conversation that's not a once a year type thing. We want a conversation where when we're in our car, Holy Spirit, you speak to us. When we're walking somewhere, you just we have conversation with you. And other people might think we're weird, but we're not because we're talking to you and you're talking back to us. And I ask for that for people in this room who've never heard your still small voice that it would come alive inside as they shut their mouth and as they listen to you, as we get rid of the busyness, as we set our phones and turn our TVs off and, and get away from the craziness of this world and we just say, God, this is your time. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I ask for you to speak words of direction and correction. Words that, that would give us ideas that we never could have thought of in our, on our own, but they can only come from you, Holy Spirit. I ask right now for you to speak as we 
take the time to listen. We ask you to do it. In Jesus' name, amen.